But really, we know, we know more about this data. So we know what a normal or a severe, a severe uh, lead measurement is. So this is uh, lead levels in, in printery workers and looking at their hair lead. So we, we know what, what's a normal range and what's, what's a high range. So we could specify it ourselves. And once again here, we, we can use the manage variables in active data set menu and then use the recode variables. And if we come to this menu, we can see that we, we can recode hair lead and we might just call this lead level. And we'll make each uh, new variable, we'll make it a factor. And what we'll do is we'll say if it's between the ranges of 0 to 5, so this here means a, a sequence, 0 to 5, or a range, and we'll set that to normal. And we'll do the same again, 5 to uh, 25, we'll call that high. And 25 to 700, remember the top value is nearly 700, and we'll call that severe. So if we say OK, now if we go back and have a look at that data, we can see that we can see that we now have normal when it's when it's low, lower than five, when it goes above five, it's high, and then the two top values are severe. So again we may decide just to look at, at uh, the to summarize the active data set. And we'll see that it's that we've got here our, our numerical variable hair lead, but we've also got these factors or categorical variables that um, have been um, put in just just um, using the the menus before, and we've ended up with just a, ta a tabulation of the number of um, observations that fell into each category here. And we'll see one one thing that a lot of stats packages do is they actually put uh, the, the factor levels in the wrong order because they'll just uh, put them in alphabetical order and we know we really like to see normal before high and then severe so we can change that around quite simply by looking at um, this manage variables in active data set menu again but we've got a, an option down here to reorder factor levels so if we choose uh, it just just got two factors here now. If we choose lead level, and we'll just use the same name, we'll just overwrite it. Uh, we can make it an ordered factor. We can say OK. And is it OK to overwrite? Yes, it is. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to put normal down as the first level. This is the new order. And we'd like to put high as the second. And we'll leave the severe as, as the third level. So now if we uh, run, a, run the summaries again, we'll see that it's now in the right order, normal, high and severe. And if we'd like to do some summary statistics, uh, numerical summaries on hair lead, if we summarize by groups, then we can use the lead level there. And summarize by lead level, say OK, and out, out it comes in the right order. And uh, we can see the, the means of the groups. I mean, obviously, we've set these up ourselves. So um, we, we, know, we know what's happening. But maybe if we had um, males and females, uh, then we might want to might uh, look at the summary statistics for each of the groups uh, here. So the next thing that I'll, that I'll look at is, um, is subsetting this data set. So I might like to, to take out that very large value uh, so that we can we can just look at uh, say a plot with without that value in. Otherwise uh, otherwise it'll just dominate and we won't see any difference uh, between in the in the two smaller groups. So we can do that by using uh, the the data active data set menu and and subsetting the active data set. So we can include all the variables, and but we might just call it uh, a new name, sub dot 
df, so, so it's a data frame and, a, and it's a, but it's a subset. And for that, we can use hair led less than 600. So that'll drop out the top value. So if we press OK, we'll uh, we'll see down here that 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 last time the data set led to had 17 rows and three columns, but now the sub df has dropped out one value. It's got 16 rows and three columns. And we can confirm that just by going straight and looking at a, a box plot, say. We can plot out hair lead, but we'd like to see uh, the, the, um, the, three, the three groups there that we've got. Just looking at the, another way of looking at the summary statistics, the middle of the, 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 the group here. The middle of each group is the, is the bar. Obviously, it's with just one point up here. And this is the sort of range of the data. And these are the quartiles. So that we, we can see that they're big, the big, uh, the big um, value has been dropped out. So once you've got a plot, you might you might want to uh, print it or, or save it or copy it into, uh, cut and paste it into to Word. And so you can do all that using the file menu. And you might want to, uh, as I say, you use the print, print it, print it out. Or you might want to copy it to the clipboard. You've got two choices here. Uh, just depends on what word processing software you're using. And you can also save it as a number of different file formats. So you probably wouldn't use JPEG, which is for photos, but you might use TIFF or PNG. Or if you want really high quality um, graphics, you might use a PostScript, uh, and that's really designed for printing. A lot of journals require that, but you've got a choice here. So, so you, can, um, you can save it however you like. And so the the last thing that we'll do before is just is we can just save this data away. Now instead of using file and save, we can save the workspace if we want. That'll save everything, but we might just want to save this last data set. So we can use the active data set, save the active data set, and we'll just call it uh, example 2.2 ex. 22, and we can just save it as a as a R data file. And so, so I guess the uh, the last thing to do is to quit out of R Commander. And we can do that with we can exit from Commander and R all in one hit, um, and uh, we can show you some other things on the next video. Thank you. Oh, but we, the other thing we can do is we can save the script file to rerun it if we'd like to. Uh, we won't do that. And we can save the output file if we'd like to, to cut and paste it into Word or, or grab out some of the, some of the results.